Hi guys, Jordan from BMP Campers. Just because of your handover video on your Rymol Catamarano. So under the bonnet here, obviously it's a Ford Transit base uh, key goes in here to unlock it. So you push to the left first and then to the right to lift it open. You've got your brake fluid just here attached to the servo at the back there. Power steering fluid, this reservoir just here at the front. Engine oil goes in through this cap just here at the top. And you should have an engine oil dipstick somewhere. Wherever that might be, here you go. So there's your engine oil dipstick there. You then also got on the right hand side here, you've got your engine coolant. So you can see there, the engine's cold at the moment and it's sat right there between the minimum and maximum line. So that's absolutely perfect. Washer fluid sits inside this reservoir just here. Uh, if you see this red cap just here, when you take that cover off, that exposes the positive terminal for your engine battery. Um, so the actual engine battery itself sits under the floor in the cab. Um, so if you want to jump start the vehicle, take the little cap off this red bit here, which is your positive. And it does say here uh, that your engine hoist prong, this one just here, is a decent earth to earth that off. So if you wanted to uh, jump start the vehicle, positive there, earth down here. If you can't get any decent earth from down there, you can pretty much choose anything that looks, you know, decent thick metal, something down there probably would be better, uh, good. Um, so yeah, that's about it for under the bonnet. On the near side, we've got your engine uh, or diesel filling point just there. So you need your ignition key to get that open and your Rymar chassis plate just there. The cab itself is all pretty straightforward. Um, you've got air conditioning, which works from this dial just here. So you basically just push it in, which allows it to uh, start working. Um, I'll show you a few more bits around the other side when we get in, so I can show you, you know, a bit closer up. Your leisure battery sits down here. So that's it just in there. This cupboard. Fresh water inlet, this one just here. That's where your uh, fresh water goes in. I just need to lock that up in a minute. Got a load of uh, storage underneath here and the carpets as well that we take up with, uh, you know, when, when we're cleaning and that kind of thing. Um, so if you did want to refit those and you can do, they're just in here. Your fresh and wastewater drains are both down here. So you've got waste on the left hand side there and fresh on the right hand side. You then also got your boiler vent, which is that one just there. Toilet cassette locker. So to get this cassette to come out, lift up on this little yellow bit at the bottom and then pull it out all the way forwards. Uh, then all you need to know really is that you drain it out from here. And when you are draining it out, you need to hold down the little yellow button at the back there, which is basically an air pressure release and uh, just makes everything a lot easier. You've got a four bike bike rack with all the uh, top arms as well to hold on to the top of the bike. So you've got four of those and then four rungs here for the bikes. You've then got an external uh, gas point. So as long as your gas is switched on and you put it in there properly, you get the right point for it. That should work nicely. Hookup point, this one just here. So if you're at home or at your campsite, wherever you are, if you want a hookup cable plugged in, that's where you go for that. Um, the minute you plug that in, your battery charger will start charging up your leisure battery and uh, you know, you'll have access to anything 240 volt inside the vehicle. You've got a refillable uh, propane bottle just here. So it's a gas low bottle. Filling point is just there behind this little cover. Oh, get that off and put it on properly in a minute. Um, so all you need to know really is that obviously you fill it up from there, uh, but you need to turn the bottle on anti-clockwise like that. And turning it off is clockwise around to the right like that. Uh, there's, if ever you turn the bottle on and you can't get any gas to come through, there's a little green button just down here. So if you turn it on and no gas is coming through, just push and hold on this button for a few seconds and that will basically purge the gas through to the system and then you shouldn't have a problem after that. Obviously, you need to refill this as and when you need to. Um, there's plenty of gas in it as we speak. Um, you know, I've got bits and pieces on in the van at the moment. Uh, but, yeah, that's all that.
really nice and simple. Um, I'll do it when I've got two hands in a minute, I'll put that back on properly. Right, obviously you've got your main habitation door just there. You have also got this lock just here, which has got its right key to go around and lock it in position. Um, these are really, really nice and strong, by the way. So if you ever, you know, want to lock the van up properly and make sure that no one can get in it, it's, uh, you know, pretty fail safe. And the last thing I want to show you on the outside really is these two vents just here. So these are your fridge vents and uh, they're nice and easy to get off if you ever needed to. Got these little buttons just inside here. So just push to the left and then to the right and then the whole thing will just come out. Um, you shouldn't really need to do that, to be honest. It's only really for us if we're going to re you know, replace an element or clean a burner or something like that. Um, so you shouldn't really need to do that for any decent reason, really. Um, so in the cab, again, like I say, it's quite nice and simple, but your lights are over here. So side lights, main beam. You've also got cruise control, which is uh, operated on the steering wheel. So you're on and off here, resume, set speeds, up and down the speed, all that sort of stuff. Um, this dial down here is all for the stereo because obviously it's the original four doubled in size stereo. Indicators on the left hand stalk there, washers and wipers on the right. You've got a reversing camera up there, so if I just put the ignition on, power comes on there, and there you go, you can see it working nicely. Turn that off. Um, you've got a heated windscreen. So I don't know if you better see it on the video at all, but windscreen, heat of windscreen button is that one there. Um, it's actually quite hard to see, even in real life. Anyway, uh, so that's that. Uh, hazard lights, that one just there. All of your heat controls, like I said to you, you've got air conditioning, which works on that left-hand dial there. Um, a bit of 12 volt power, just there if you need, did need anything. This bit opens up and you've got a bit more 12 volt power in there as well. So if you wanted to like sort of put a phone charger or something like that, if we can put your phone in here, it's quite a nice little space for that. And also uh, you've got this here, which opens up like that. If you did want to do that, which honestly I've only just noticed, which is uh, pretty good. You can over that back over like that. So um, yeah, there's plenty of storage in the cab for anything you need. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so I'm gonna turn around now, I'll show you the motorhome side of things, which I know a bit more about, to be honest. So, your control panel sits up here, so it's a typical, uh, sort of like Rymore styled um, control panel, nice and simple. So, all of this stuff up here is all just level indicators. So, when I press on this little magnifying glass, it shows you. Your battery voltage on this one, because next to this battery voltage meter level. So that's absolutely full. And then this one on the left is showing you your fresh water level. So the fresh water is pretty much empty, battery is pretty much full. The next button is to turn your water pump on. So once you've got that light on there, you then be able to draw your water through any of the taps um, and then you know fill the boiler up, all that sort of stuff, which I'll show you how to do in just a minute. We'll turn that one off for now because there's no water in the tank, so it's not going to get up to pressure. And the other two are these two here. So these are literally just your main lights on and off switch. So literally, now that I've got those two on there, I can go around and every single light in this van will work. All right. That's all that does. Um, if you had a hookup cable plugged into the vehicle, this light up here would be on. And if your wastewater was full up, this light here would be on. Okay, so as long as you've got water in your fresh tank, you can then go ahead and start using your boiler and things like that. But what I need to show you first is fill your, boil, uh, fill your uh, water up, turn your pump on. Once you've turned the pump on, you wanna come over to this tap over here and then just basically pull the water through. All right, literally just pull the tap, wait for the water to come through. And once it has come through, you can then go and you know use your boiler. Basically, the reason that, that is uh, is essentially if you don't do that first, there's no way of knowing really if your boiler is full or if it's empty. Um, so you need to do that first. It's really important to do that. Uh, right. So 
I'll get onto that properly in a minute. I'll show you the boiler stuff in just a minute. Right, so we've got a cooker and, or well, a grill and an oven, sorry. The ignition works just by pressing on the button. Pressing it in and going round to the left lights up the oven at the back. Pushing it in and round to the right lights the grill up at the top. Really nice and simple. We've also got a little rotisserie button there, which turns around something in the inside, and a light in there as well. Sorry for the mug shot of me just then. Uh, right, the fridge underneath that. Again, really, really nice and simple, the way to use it. I'll turn it all the way off just for a minute, just so we can show you it working properly. So if I want to turn this on, push and hold on this button just here. Lights come on. Straight away, it's chosen gas. And it's just lit straight up, all right? So basically what it will do is it'll automatically select an energy for you um, before you even do anything. If it lights itself up on gas, so you can see by pressing this button just here once, you can see what what sort of energy it's using. So you see it's got a gas flame on level four. So if I want to change that, I'll push and hold on this button and the gas flame symbol starts flashing. Then I can flick through. So that's 12 volt. That's when your engine's running. And that's hookup. So that's when your hookup's plugged in. If the hookup was plugged in and it was flashing there, I'd click on that one and then go maximum. Press the button again and then it'll basically be working on hookup on level five. The reason it's flashing now is because there's no hookup plugged in and it's just showing up an error basically. Um, so if I want to go back to gas again, push and hold on the button, that's flashing now. So then I'll scroll through to gas, press this button and then again, and it will light up. All right, that's as simple as it gets. As long as you've got a little green light inside there, even if this screen goes off, a little green light in there indicates to you that it's working. So the other one that I was saying about, which is this middle one, the little 12 volt symbol, is for when your engine's running only. So what you have to do to get these fridges to work properly, I mean, same for all of the fridges on the motorhomes, you need to make sure that you get the fridge cold first, either via the gas or the 240 volt, so the hookup, and then change over to 12 volt for when your engine's running only when it's already cold. The reason for that is that the 12 volt element won't get the fridge cold on its own, it'll only hold a temperature. So you need to make sure that you get the fridge cold first, either via the electric uh, 240 volt or the gas. But for now, I'm gonna turn it off. So push and hold again on the off button, and that's it. No more green light inside there. All the lights have gone out, it's off. Okay. Obviously you've got your bed up there, um, load of extra bits and pieces, I think they're um, screens for the windscreen, which aren't cheap by the way, really, really helpful to have those there. Um, the ladder for, to getting up onto the bed is here as well, and obviously your little hinges there for that are there already. Really, really nice big open table seating plan. Um, you've got six seat belts, obviously it's a six berth vehicle, and having the six seat belts really, really helps. Um, you see it so many times where you see a motorhome, it's got a six berth, but it's only got two seat belts, which is weird, but you know, that, that is how they do it sometimes. So it's already always helpful to have that there already. Um, okay, so the boiler is really nice and simple. It's gas only, so there's no electric function on the boiler at all. Um, all you need to know really is if you want to drain the boiler out, you twist this little uh, blue part at the top, and then a little blue button at the back will pop out. That'll drain all the water out from the boiler onto the ground. And then you can basically push the blue button in on the back and turn this back around to where it is now. And then it will basically just start filling it back up again. To actually use the boiler, you've got this little dial over here. So if I want hot water, I go up one or up two, which is either 40 or 60 degrees hot water or I can go back to the off position. Down one is heating only, and down two is heating and hot water at 60 degrees. All right, so that's that. Um, the other thing as well, I'll just show you, if you've got a little amber light inside there, it means that there's water being heated up. Um, if there's no amber light and there's just a green light, it means the heating's on. And if there's a red light in there, it means it's failed. 
by the way, just so you know as well, the fact that the boiler's failed doesn't always mean there's something wrong with it. It just means that the gas hasn't quite got there yet. Or it could just mean that it hasn't quite lit up on the first go. It's, it's quite normal. Um, so if you do get that problem, just give it a couple of goes. Make sure your gas is switched on, all that sort of stuff. And obviously that you've got gas in the bottle. Um, but yeah, it's quite normal for those boilers to take a few goes. Um, but that's that. Also, if you have had the boiler lit up for a little while, it can take a few minutes to actually turn itself off after you've turned it off. You see there, the, the green light was flashing just there. That can sometimes go in for a lot, lot longer. Um, it's basically just it cooling itself down before it actually turns itself off. Um, so yeah, there's that. Skylight, just basically twist that and that'll open up. And then twist it back down. Again, like I say, all the lights around the vehicle have all got their own sort of like individual switches. Um, sink and shower, both the same thing. So you, like you can see there, I've just basically pulled that out and hooked it up over there to use it as the shower. Um, yeah, I've got a whacking great big light up there as well, which has got plenty of brightness for at night. Um, and then the only other thing really I want to show you is your toilet. So to actually flush it, you press the, the blue button at the back. That pumps the fluid around. Your water pump needs to be on and you do need to have water in the tank as well to make that work. And then opening this flap here opens the flap inside the toilet. So it's closed now. Now it's open. You need to make sure that you close that back over whenever you finish because you need to make sure that you don't get bad smells coming back through into the van. But also it means if you have that flap open, you will not be able to take the cassette out from outside because it locks it in place. So really important to do that. Um, I'll just show you how your windows work if you like. Uh, so over here look, we've got blind that pulls down from the top and then squeeze these two together for your blackout screen like that. Windows are really nice and simple. Open all of those up and then you've got latches for wherever you want the window to open to all right so that's that uh what else have we got it's a reasonably short video because it's so straightforward um easy to talk through a lot of the vans have got you know all sorts of stuff going on everywhere and it's quite hard to explain but this one's been nice and simple so um yeah, I mean, other than that, I don't think there's a huge amount else to, to show you. If you're going to pack it, pack the van up and, uh, you know, get ready to drive off, make sure that you've switched your fridge over to 12 volt. Uh, make sure that you turn your gas off outside. Make sure that all your skylights are down and properly, you know, secured down. All your windows are shut and all the things are closed over like that. Um, and to stop you getting too annoyed when you're driving, because the vans, these motorhomes are noisy and rattly when they drive. Sometimes non-slip mats and things like that are quite useful um for you know for in the grill and things like that especially but you know you'll, you'll come to work that sort of stuff out anyway uh but yeah so if there's anything you think i've missed out or anything you want going over again just let us know but otherwise i look forward to seeing you soon to collect your van thanks very much